Good morning, folks. It's Rob Timmings from ECT for Health here with another video. Hopefully, you're enjoying these educational videos. Um, I'm doing them whiteboard style because a lot of the teaching that I do in the classroom is on the whiteboard. So this sort of just emulates that. Um, so this is part of our Knowing Your Jargon series. Uh, which goes along with the blog site that we put up on Facebook and also on the blogger.com. Uh, follow those if you're interested, uh, or just get involved with the uh, with the the videos that I that I post up here and um, and and give us some comments. This video here is a three part video, and we're going to be looking at the concept of understanding hemostasis. That process that when we cut ourselves, we have to hemo blood stasis stop. So hemostasis is the process of stopping bleeding. It involves three steps. This first video in the three-part series will have a look at the first of those steps. So let's just have a look at them. Vasoconstriction, clotting and coagulation. All three of these things need to happen if you're going to stop bleeding. Let's start with the first step, vasoconstriction, in this video. So here we have a typical blood vessel. I say it's typical because it's a pipe, it carries blood. Uh, the thing with this blood vessel is that like all arteries and veins, it has three layers to its wall. So if we're there, it went a little bit, a little bit wonky there. So three layers to the wall. You can clearly see that we've got an inside layer, we've got an outside layer, and on the inside of between those layers, we've got our muscle wall layer there. I'm just sort of peppering with some red ink just to indicate that we've got a muscle wall. Now the clever textbooks like us to give these special names to these layers. So the outside layer of, is, the, is the, the soft elastic layer. That's that layer that typically gives arteries and veins that elastic spongy sort of feel. Um, this is called the tunica externa. Uh, in the middle, the tunica media, that's our muscle layer and that's smooth muscle, unlike skeletal or cardiac muscle, which has stripy striations in it. This is a smooth muscle, so vascular smooth muscle. And then on the very inside, you've got that very, very thin single cell thick layer on the very inside. And I guess it's that layer that I really want to focus on so that we can understand a few things about that. If I can just scroll up the page there, and we're going to try and emulate this layer by making a whole lot of these vascular cells. So here is this vascular cells here. And these vascular cells, they are a flat cell. They're called a squamous cell. We've got that sort of those muscle cells that sit underneath that layer. And that muscle can be however many cells thick, depending on the thickness of your blood vessel wall. But what separates these two is a very, very delicate thin layer of a protein membrane. And this protein is a type of collagen. Uh, the collagen itself acts a little bit like a glue that allows these endothelial cells, the tunica intima, these endothelial cells to sort of stick to that layer. Now, these cells are like Teflon coating on the inside of a, of a, a fry pan. So you know when you buy a brand new fry pan and it's, it's just sublime to cook with, you can slide eggs around on the inside of it, nothing sticks, that beautiful Teflon coating. Well, that's what these cells do, these endothelial cells here in black, are those cells that just make a nice slippery lining to the inside of your blood. Uh, blood vessels. So you, this would be the inside. So this is where the blood is circulating up in here. So these cells are not just wallpaper. They're dynamic. They secrete many, many substances. And for the purposes of understanding hemostasis, we need to understand probably three important substances. The first one that is secreted from here, let's just get rid of that blood for a start. The first one that's secreted from here is a substance called nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide is a substance that causes vasodilation. So when nitric oxide is secreted from these cells, NO, this actually causes these muscle cells down here to relax. So the role of nitric oxide is actually a vaso dilator. And you can see that this would be important. A blood vessel 
is designed to allow blood to flow through it. So every time that there was some sort of constrictive uh, process going on inside that blood vessel, then it would be reasonable that there would be a, a, an intuitive way for that blood vessel muscle wall to relax, to vasodilate, to allow for more blood to flow through. The second substance that's secreted from these endothelial vascular cells, these vascular endothelial cells, is a, a type of prostaglandin, and this is a prostaglandin called prostacyclin. C-Y-C-L-I-N, with an I in there. So prostacyclin, think of prostacyclin as erigard for platelets. So every time a platelet comes along, and let's have a little platelet, comes along and a platelet wants to get close to these cells, what platelets will do as soon as they have any opportunity to have a rest, they will activate and they'll start to form a clot. Now we're going to go through platelets and clotting in the very next video, but what platelets will want to do is they will want to rest on these vascular endothelial walls and these vascular endothelial walls are saying, no, nah, you can't rest here, this is a no standing zone. And so what they will do is they will secrete a substance called prostacyclin to repel them. So you could think of prostacyclin as an anti-platelet substance. If you weren't making prostacyclin, platelets can rest, platelets can start to form a, form a clot. The last substance that's secreted from these cells actually is a substance which you've heard of. This is heparin. Now, I'm spelling it with an A because the heparin that's secreted from these cells is spelt with the A in it. Rather than heparin, the drug that you give, which is an anticoagulant, the heparan is very, very similar. It does exactly the same job, it just has a different spelling. I don't fully understand why but its role is similar. It stops fibrin from forming. And what fibrin is, is it's the end product of that process called coagulation. Our third video in this series goes through coagulation and takes you all the way through to fibrin to understand where fibrin comes into play. So if you can imagine, you've got a blood vessel, its role is to allow oxygenated blood to travel through it. It doesn't need to be obstructed or occluded in any way. So intuitively, the walls of that blood vessel are hardwired to secrete nitric oxide to allow for vasodilation, to secrete prostacyclin to stop platelets from clumping and forming a clot, and to secrete this heparin to allow for the blood to, to maintain its liquidity or its it's to, to stop blood from coagulating or solidifying. These three things keep your blood flowing. But what if I injure myself? Well, if I injure myself, I'm going to want to switch those off, aren't I? And so let's give this blood vessel here an injury. I've got myself a little injury here. Now, because I've got this injury, I have now got a situation where blood is going to start to leak. So the blood that's traveling through here some of it's going to start to leak out of the blood vessel. I'm literally going to start bleeding. And this is where the magic starts. As I start to bleed, these damaged cells in here, they're going to start to secrete distress chemicals. And those distress chemicals stimulate these muscles in the middle layer of the blood vessel to constrict. And as soon as that constriction takes place, then of course we're going to have a situation where the, where the blood vessel becomes narrower and the amount of blood that can travel through that blood vessel is going to be less. We're going to literally get constriction or spasm in that, in that vessel to, to prevent further blood loss. That's our first step in the process of hemostasis. That is the process of vasoconstriction. If you enjoyed that, hang around, click on the next video for part two. Part two, we're going to be looking at clotting. The next step, understanding the platelets a little bit more. Thanks for watching.